But I gotta check engine light on this thing. And uh, I need to do something about it before I get stranded. So I'm gonna run the codes and see what I got. All right, so I got my trusty little Innova code reader. This is the cheapest code reader. Uh, I don't. I'll put. I'll try and put the part number down below uh, and see how much it costs. But I. I don't even remember if I paid for this or if it was a, a gift or what. But very inexpensive. Reads codes, clears codes. Uh, I carry this around with me all the time because people like to ask me to read codes. Uh, this reads them and clears them. And I think it shows uh, some of the uh, monitors if you're trying to run for emissions. So I got a P0193 code. And uh, let's see. I'm going to Google that see what that says. All right. So coming up with a fuel rail pressure sensor circuit high input. Uh, means the powertrain control module has detected that the fuel rail pressure is out of, uh, outside the range. Uh, let's see if it gives me uh, the best repair for it. So the first thing it says, clear the code and see if it comes back. I've already done that. I like to do that as well, just to double check, make sure it wasn't some kind of random uh, uh, occurrence to where it caused the, the check engine light to come on. But uh, that's not, not, not the case. And then it says visually inspect the fuel rail pressure sensor. There's a lot of times when I got, when I see a code for a circuit, I like to look at, uh, rodent damage, look for rodent damage. So we'll go do that in a second. Uh, check the wiring connectors, make sure they're not loose. Okay. So, uh, I just Googled, uh, the most common fix for P0193. And it says uh, to replace a fuel rail pressure sensor itself. Other potential causes and fixes include checking the wiring connection. So we're going to go out there and check the connections and stuff and see. But uh, this is interesting. I, I haven't used AI yet uh, to try and fix uh, or diagnose a car. I'll show you what I usually use. But uh, So now I want to go out and inspect the uh, the wiring harness and the, and the connector and make sure everything's good there. Okay, so out here on the engine now, and uh, here's our fuel pressure sensor. Uh, that's on the fuel rail right there. Uh, so check the connector and make sure there's nothing. A lot of times I like to peel. Here, let me bring you over here so you might be able to see better. So on the connector right here, you can check and make sure it's not loose or uh, check the inside of it, make sure there's no corrosion or anything like that. I don't see anything going on there. Or if it's like melted in here or something, it could be the connector. Uh, but sometimes you get uh, rats, rodents coming in here and uh, they'll just take a, a tiny little bite out of these wires. So you really gotta look at them closely and make sure there's no damage uh, right up close to the sensor. If you need to pull back the the uh, with loom the wire loom a little bit and kind of look in there, but don't just look right here. Follow this back and and follow along the wiring harness and see. And here we can see the harness goes up here, so there could be a bite taken out from a rodent in this area here. And the harness keeps going down, uh, so if you can check wherever you can and it could possibly be something rubbing on there so just look all around in your uh, engine compartment for any any signs of rodent damage and you really got to be thorough uh, i'll take a flashlight and look down way down in there and stuff and sometimes i've seen it to where it's just like one wire way down in there that's been bitten but i don't see any damage i'll look around a little bit more here and see but uh, it doesn't look like there's any damage that i can see Okay, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. I've never done this before, but this is Pro Demand. Uh, it's an online uh, service tool that you can subscribe to. And uh, I put in the information for the Shelby and I put in P0193 and the research results. And then the real fixes, it, it, it'll give you like uh, basically how to test everything. This is what somebody actually did. They tech checked for resistance and all that other stuff voltage uh source voltage top repairs this is what i wanted to show you this is going to show you what the the number one repair was replace fuel pressure sensor 
Uh, you can see as it approaches 100,000 miles, the number that's the number one uh, replaced item to fix this problem. Uh, so I think it's probably safe to say that uh, the fuel pressure sensor is probably going out. Okay, so I checked uh, Pro Demand to see what the top fix was for that code. I did check all over the place. I checked even on the other side, followed the wiring harness, looked all over for any signs of any damage to the wiring harness. Uh, I couldn't find anything anywhere on there, and uh, I did check Pro Demand, and uh, the number one fix is to replace that sensor and so i called ford and they had it in stock here's the part number for that i'll also put it down below so just because they had it in stock too that kind of tells me that uh this is a somewhat of a common problem so i'm going to go ahead and put this thing in uh, but i think that underneath there there's going to be some fuel that's going to come out of there so uh, i got this rag i'm going to slowly loosen up the bolts and kind of ease that sensor up out of there and see what kind of uh, fuels underneath it. Oh, here comes the fuel. I'm gonna leave that in there so more fuel doesn't come out while I get the new one ready. All right, here's the new sensor. I did put just a little bit of oil around the O-ring there, maybe help it go in and keep the health of that thing going. Let's see. No, well, here's the old one. Looks fine to me. I don't know what the problem is. All right, so I got the new one in there. I'm going to tighten these bolts down. These things were not very tight at all. Not because they were loose, but the torque spec on them is probably like uh, 90 inch pounds or something like that. Not very tight. So uh, that feels about almost exactly like 90 inch pounds right there. My calibrated arm. Reconnect the electrical. And the vacuum. Uh, before I go for a test drive, I want to check and make sure there's no leaks right here. So I'm going to jump inside, start it, and maybe give it some revs and make sure nothing's leaking out of there. And it doesn't look like there's any leaks, so that's good. Then I'm back inside the car now. I got my uh, scanner hooked up here and I'm going to go ahead and clear the code and then uh, go for a test drive. So one of the only symptoms this car had with that faulty sensor, if it was that, was that it would die out under power, under load, uh, and the check engine light, of course. But it, it only happened every now and then. So I'm turning onto a road where I got to get on, I got to get on some power. It would cut out a little bit, so let's see if it still does it. Felt pretty good. So I don't think that, uh, let's see, how do I say this? So that procedure, the way I kind of ran through it, scanning the code, even Googling it, finding out what the code's for, and now even asking AI, or if you go to, you don't even have to go to Pro Demand anymore, just to ask AI what the most common repair is, and uh, you can do that repair. And I just got the sensor, put the sensor in, it seems to be fixed. Now, I'm not saying that's the right way, I'm saying that's the faster way. The correct way would be to back probe it, check for resistance, check for voltage, uh, pin, pin the, uh, the computer, the, uh, the ECM, make sure all the electrical is good, and then if all of the electrical is good, then you replace the sensor. However, that's time consuming and not a lot of mechanics are the best with electronics, so running the code on this cheap, on this cheap scanner uh, getting the code, doing doing a Google search, asking AI what the top fix is for uh, that code. And the one thing I will say with this situation is a, a, a lot of the sensors on these on the Fords, the the OEM stuff, the Motocraft stuff, if you can get it from a dealership, uh, seems to be better. I would 
I would go with the uh, with the manufacturer stuff if possible. But uh, I'll drive this back to the house and uh, scan the code again and see uh, if there's any codes or anything like that. But it pulled straight through. I haven't been able to get a straight through pull uh, since I've started having that problem. It was weird. It was like it would just like let like lose lose a bunch of power under load uh, as if the clutch was slipping or something like that but I could tell that it wasn't uh, the clutch but that would kind of what it would feel like to kind of put it in perspective but hopefully that fixed it I think it did all right I'm back at the house I did a couple more pulls tried to stay within the speed limit posted speed limit and uh, it didn't cut out at all so uh, it felt felt good I wanted to scan it one more time just to see I, I don't think I mean, I'd have a check engine light if I had some codes, but there's no codes on it after driving it. So uh, I'm pretty confident that that's going to fix the problem. I'll put in the comments down below if uh, it comes on later on while I'm driving it. Uh, but let me know if you have any questions and uh, thanks for watching.